Oh, we're already live. <laughs> well, welcome back to the channel, guys, and welcome back to another video. And uh, this will be part five of working on these two guys right here. That is the um, the Tamiya F4B Phantom and the Academy F4D, the ROKAF version, which is no longer in production. So it was a little bit of a challenge getting that particular one, but I really wanted it because I wanted to do an ROKAF F4 Phantom. So I'm actually turning the Tamiya one into that one, and then the Academy one, that'll be just a regular US style version. So yeah, uh, pardon me for a moment, I just have to deal with the message. We have our cockpits and they are done. They're finished. Do to do, do. Well, um, we got the uh, the landing gear bay, uh, the front one done on the Tamiya kit, and I glued it down, and so that's what this is. So now we're going to do the Academy one. Okay, the Academy one that is next in the order of operations on our Academy kit. If I grab our instructions here. Um, we have to, it's actually, you could say it was the first step before actually assembling the, the cockpit. So I got the pieces painted and uh, they are ready to get put together. So let me find the sprue. So this is the F tree and um, as you can tell I've done some primering uh, in some parts but this is molded in white so really not a lot of painting required when it comes to the landing gear base which is it's a nice touch it's a neat little thing that Academy has done in molding different parts of the aircraft in different colors it's a nice touch um, but at the same time you know we're going to be painting it all anyway, so it's a little bit not necessary. Because, um, I mean, you're going to be adding weathering and, and things like that anyway, so... Our regular model kit's all going to be one color on the sprues. So the fact that Academy has chosen to do these all in different colors like I've got white I got gray I got black spruce it's um, yeah it's a nice thing if you really want to minimize how much you have to paint it's a nice idea but I mean realistically you're gonna wind up painting 90% of it anyway so bear with me a second here <clears throat> okay, so we're going to clean these up a little bit. I'll change the camera when it comes to time to put these together so you guys can see um, the difference between <laughs> the detail. Just the difference in the detail alone between the Academy kit and the Tamiya is huge. Um, Academy went with a very, very simplistic style and wall pattern. Tamiya, of course, much more complicated. You assembled um, probably twice the amount of parts comparatively. Okay, I'll change my camera and we can get started here. Okay, so as you can, may or may not see, Academy's put these little arrows on these. You probably can't see it in a washed out white color. There's a little arrow pointing down. That's going to give you the idea of where that's supposed to go. And they've done that on the front and the rear um, panels. So, 
basically, I'm going to take this piece and this piece. They're going to go like that. Like this. Let's orient them the way that they show in the diagram. Like that. We got this guy has to go like that, and he's going to go in here. Like that. Right against that block. At least that's what it looks like in the book. Right in behind the block. There's no guide pin, there's no holes. So possibly I could just slide it down. No, I can't even slide it. It's just got to sit there like that. Trying to figure out if it's uh, there is a little nub here, but I don't know if that's actually supposed to be there. I don't think it is. No, it's just some flashing. So that goes like that, right there. Okay. take our smaller piece and it's going to go on the back like this with the these bigger pieces at the top arrow pointing down See, this is like the biggest difference between this and the Tamiya kit. Is this is all kind of a little bit of guesswork on how it's getting to be 90 degrees and fit together good. And now this piece, again, we just line it up and put it on there like that. So. Again, arrow facing down. And again, there's no guide pins, there's no holes. There's nothing, it just literally sits on there. And that's it. So you could, in theory, <laughs> have it not square. And have it not line up. And then, now that it's all together, we're going to put it in here. So now that I realize, I need to paint the bottom of this white. Because I've got the, the roof, the roof of it integrated into the bottom of the um, cockpit. And it's going to sit like this. No guides, no pegs, no nothing. So I need to paint that white. Now my white was starting to run out. I'm going to try and get it. I actually threw the can into my garbage. I figured there's not enough left to get it out. So I might be able to get enough out of this can to actually cover that. I hadn't planned on it. Let's see here. We will try, we will try. I don't want to paint my fingers, so let me do that. And we'll 
give this a try and give this a shot of color here. There we go. Now it's white. I'll let that dry for a second or two or ten or twenty. So then I'll hit it with another coat. See, I want to let it dry because I don't want it to run. But you can see where I got a little bit of a splatter right there. And it's actually still glossy. So even though this is a flat white, it's still glossy. That tells me it's still wet. So I want to wait. The next step after getting the thing glued on is to actually put it in the bottom part of the fuselage. So I might as well get that off the screw now. That's going to be the next step. That's this piece here. So while we're waiting for that to dry, let's get this off of here. They kind of undergated them. So even though I cut them off at the side, they're actually undergated to minimize nub marks. So that's a nice little thing. You see that all the time on Gundam kits. It minimizes having to clean up a lot of the nub marks from this where it attaches, call them nubs, call them gate marks, whatever, whatever you prefer. See, so it manages to hide them really good, so you minimize the amount that you have to clean up when you actually attach your fuselage. I think that is dry enough now, I can try and get a second coat on it. That's a lot more white, so we'll let that dry. And now I'll throw this out. So let that dry. Hey, 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 hey. I guess I should have left that on there. <laughs> Alright, so this, once it's glued on, it's going to sit down. They actually have a little bit of a ridge going around inside here for this to sit in, so that's nice. Fits in there very snugly. Now let's just take a look, have a little comparison between the two ceilings of the Two kits and the, the level of detail difference right that's that's it there's a huge huge difference oh I missed mega boy <laughs> mega boy good morning hello are you doing weekday streams now <laughs> well this week I am I'm on vacation this week and so it gives me an opportunity to actually stream during the week all right so um, I would like to do the my typical um, ac accent color underneath there, um, like I did in here, to get that nice dirty detail. Um, I did some on the walls of this thing, um, although there's not a lot. There's there's so much less detail. All the Thank you, airplanes. All they have are these little ribs going across there. This seems to be okay, but if I were to try and put that panel line accent color on here now, it's it just soak right into the white, and I wouldn't be able to clean it out because this is not fully cured, right? And that's the drawback to it. So I am going to glue this thing on now. That's the wrong way. It goes like this. I'll glue this on now, and I will do that detail on there. 
a little bit later. This, let me change, sorry guys. There we go. Again, there's no guide, guiding holes or pins or anything like that, so you just put it on there. difficult to put pressure and hold it, I think I could try a rubber band. I don't want to put a clamp on it. The clamp's going to be way too heavy-handed. Let's try a rubber band. I want to put a little bit of pressure to hold it down. I can't just put it down on the desk and... So let's try a rubber band. moving it all around like this so I've totally gotten rid of all the adhesion from the glue so now I'm going to have to get in there with my thin. This holds it really tight though, that's perfect, that's good. Let's get some thin in there. What's going to be the trick now is making sure everything is all lined up side by side it's for when we go to put it in the, fu the, the upper fuselage that it's all going to line up because that's going to be the trick. Because unlike the Tamiya kit, see the Tamiya kit, the fuselage, the fuselage is two halves like this, right? And I mean, I, I gotta say, the Tamiya kit, their engineering is really fantastic. Pin here, pin here, you just line up the pin there and the pin there. Um, there's this little guide peg here that goes into this little this little nook right there. And that you just do that and that, set that in there, okay? And then you do the exact same. There's a pin here, a hole there. And you just line those up. And it all fits together perfectly. Perfect fit. Right. Nothing to worry about with the Tamiya kit. Typical Tamiya engineering, everything fits perfectly. I don't, there's, I'm not putting hardly any pressure to close that up. 
same with here that all just clicks in it's it's a perfect fit okay that's the Tamiya kit this however is probably going to be a little bit more of a challenge the Academy fuselage this is nice in that you have no seam line to worry about here and here right um, that's nice what I do find strange is their misalignment of their rivets on the side here but that's a whole that's a different thing so this is going to sit down over top kind of like that I can't do it now because of my rubber band holding it all together while the glue cures but if I don't have this perfectly aligned it's going to be a bit of a challenge to uh, to get it to fit in there properly especially when it's been a few days for the glue to cure right <clears throat> but if I decide hey let's uh, take off this rubber band and we'll do a little bit of a test fit right now let's uh, see if I can get this rubber band off of here without pulling off a joystick or two It's one thing to put it on there, but it's another to get it off. Okay. Okay, so there's that. Now that's... Yeah. Whoop! <laughs> wow. Fail. Okay. Let's glue that back down. This obviously held in good. It's going to be a challenge getting that in there. something wrong here or it's just a tight fit if I'm not careful I'm gonna wind up having this whole thing fall apart on me it doesn't want to go it doesn't want to squeeze together at all Something is binding. Now, of course, this wants to break off <clears throat> through no fault of my own. This little piece wants to break off. So, what is stopping it from going all the way? tight and I think when it comes time to actually gluing it it's going to be a challenge so just I'm gonna to have to press it together to hold it it's not it's not a really precise fit
unfortunately, that's the way it is. Yeah, this almost act, it's acting like it's been cracked. You know, I do not recall actually bending it in any way. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, glue. I'm going to worry about this thing at another time, because that's a bunch of crap. But that broken off, now I can sit it down like that. So we don't have that on here on the Tamiya kit. It's a separate piece, obviously, and Tamiya's not telling me to put it in there yet. So anyway, that's that. <clears throat> so I'm going to put this aside and let that cure. Instead of making it worse, let's put that there. Goes closed. Our next step. Our next step, we're going to do the Academy kit here. Our next step, we got to build some landing gear boxes. So that's going to be some fun stuff. So we need to grab our C tree and grab these pieces. Okay. Let's find our C tree. <clears throat> Here's our sea tree. Again, it's the white one. And I've done some weathering on the pieces um, before getting them assembled. So, we need C8, 12, 16, 19, and 26. Let's grab all of those off of here. <clears throat> okay, so we need C... Start with C8. Which of course is one that I did not weather, not realizing at the time that I'd need it. It's okay. C8, I need 16. It's this guy. Sixteen, I need twelve and nineteen. and 26 all right so we're going to start with these we're going to find out how this is all going to go together and see how much of a challenge it is First, let's make sure our nubs are cleaned up. kind of funny. All of these are weathered nicely, except the one piece. So I think before I assemble it, uh, I should... put some weathering on this piece. And I think it's going to go like this. So I want to weather this side. Let's grab my panel liner. Although there's not a lot of detail on this piece, I still, whoops, I want to get something on here. And I'm going to do that on the other side. So let's just clean this off. I just want it looking a little bit not so bright 
clean and white like that. That's good enough for me. I'll do the same with this one. Good enough. All right, so we're going to take this guy in this orientation, and it's going to go like that. Now, again, they've done this fun stuff. It doesn't really seem to lock together. It's just a matter of taking that edge and that edge and gluing them together like that. So this should be fun. Pretty sure this all has to get locked in on the wings. So let me just move my pieces off of the book and see. I think they all sit down into the wing here. Okay, so I'm going to grab the wings. Which wing is it? Which side? Top half, bottom half? What is it? Top half. Okay. That's this guy. Let's get this off the sprue. I'm going to use this as kind of a jig. Flip her over. I'm going to use it as kind of a jig to um, see which way does this go? Like that, I guess. So I can get every all the pieces lined up. Because one side's going to be flat like that, and the other side has the angle. So I know that this side goes here, and so I just need to do this, and now I know that's going to be like this, right? Okay, so then we're going to take this piece, and so it's going to go in a similar fashion, it's going to go here. We have this piece goes on the end, this piece goes in the middle, and it's going to go Hey, how about that? There's actually... <laughs> yeah, good job. Good job of holding it, glue. There actually is a slot that it's going to go into. So anyway, we take that, and we take this guy, let's try gluing this back on. have this upside down. No, I don't. This definitely helps in aligning it without my jig. And then this piece goes in and it actually has these little tabs That's nice that if we actually got it on one piece to get these in here. There we go. 
So, we've got everything lined up properly. It should fit in here. doesn't really fit. I've got it as aligned as I can. But this piece does our center piece doesn't seem to be lining up at all. It's like it's not long enough. And of course with all the movement that I've been doing with these parts, stay together anymore so got some extra thin that's got to sit uh, we don't want to actually glue it yet guys come on come on out of there that's about the best alignment I can get right now Now, we do a test. Is this actually for this side or is it for the other? Let's flip it over and see. Is it for this side? There's no way it doesn't it doesn't line up at all. So it definitely is for this side. Okay. So getting it to match and line up on this side is important for it to sit down in that little trench where it belongs. That's the big thing. There we go. Okay, so that needs to sit for a minute, right? Now we'll grab the, side, the pieces for the other side and we'll build the same box but for this side here, okay? So, it's the exact same pieces, they're just opposite sides. So, just before I do that, I'm going to, this has now had enough time to
put some weathering in here. together here. So this guy goes like this. We'll get our little guy for the end. It's got that little nice, that nice little notch. I like that. It's going to help a little bit. Don't, only a little bit, though. kind of how it's going. And then this has to go in this direction. I'm actually going to grab my tweezers because it's test. And that's the orientation it needs to have, just like that. So, I'll go with that. Those are two bay doors. They're not, not doors, but they're the walls of our landing gear base. So the next step is to take our actual landing gear and put it in there. That's going to be fun to do, especially if this is not fully cured. So I'm going to have to wait. It's nice that they show like actual photograph of how the little gear mechanism is supposed to be lined up in there. That's that's a nice uh, nice little addition that they've add for the added for the detail. But I really want to make sure that these are fully cured and dried before I play around with them anymore. So let's see. The next step, of course, is to put them in to the wings. But I don't want to do that now. What I can do is grab C28 and 29 and put those in the wings. I can do that. C28 and 29. That's these two here. C28 
looks like these are the upper walls. I know in the F4 Phantoms the air brakes are red on the inside. But I don't know if this part is supposed to be red. And I think it is. Because this, this is going to be technically, this is going to go like this in here. And just sit in there like that. So that's the inside. I think that should be red. Pretty sure. Which leads to the problem, do I paint it now or do I paint it later? Right? If I paint it now... Okay, let me change this. Let me talk to you for a moment. See, if I paint these now, I paint them red, then I'm going to have to mask them off later, right? I'm going to have to do something to keep from, uh, you know, all the white paint and everything and the weathering and all that stuff from getting in there. Um, alternatively, it may be a real pain to have to mask everything else off just to paint the red. Or I can paint the red by hand. I just get some, uh, some acrylic and just paint it by hand. The fact that it's on the inside, it's in here like this, it's kind of hidden a little bit, it probably won't be that big of a deal to paint it by hand with acrylics. Right? So. Those are kind of my options, and at the same time, a bit of a dilemma. Because even like right now, I don't want to throw some red paint into my airbrush and spray those just to do these two pieces. That's ridiculous. Um, which means I could just paint them by hand right now. And... Uh, I do not like the idea of I'm going to have to try and mask this off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue them in. This is my decision I just made. I'm going to glue these in here now and I will paint them red later. That's what I'm going to be doing. Okay. Okay. Yes. That's what I'll do. one. the other side. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to let that dry. I've got to let my landing gear pieces dry. And my landing gear doors. Next step would be to actually put the other halves of the wings on, but obviously you have to wait because I'm not done. I'm not ready for them. So, let's head on back to our Tamiya kit and see what's next on the Tamiya kit. Okay. What's wrong with me? There we go. 
Next on the agenda for the Tamiya kit, we've got this all done. This is all done. So next step, it's funny, it's, we're on step 13 in the Tamiya kit. We're on step 13 of the Tamiya kit and uh, all we've done is the cockpit. Um, we're going to start on the engines on the Tamiya kit. We're going to start assembling the engines. So, we got to grab our D. Got to grab our D. Uh, we want D4 and 14. Let's find that in our Tamiya kit. First we have to find our D. We've got double Ds. That's always fun. Double Ds are always fun. D4 and 14. Okay. So, 4 is this guy. Fourteen is this guy. Now it's an F4 Phantom, so we got two. Okay. All right. So. is nice enough to uh, show us the colors that they're supposed to be and so we've got some gunmetal and we've got some silver I happen to have both in spray can form and so that's what I'm going to use so we're going to do gunmetal in the middle here and then on this guy, we're going to be doing silver. So let's just determine which way it goes, which way is the visible side. It looks like... It goes like this. Oh yes, we actually have notches for it to line up. I love that about Tamiya. That's awesome. I love that about Tamiya. And I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to do this. So I know that pin lights up with that, that line. I'm going to do the same on this one. Because we have little notches here. One here, one here, one here. But they're different. They're different sizes. So I'll try and show you on the camera. So notch there, and here, and here. But they're all—all all three of them are different widths. So it only goes. And I li happen to just line this one up perfectly the very first try. So let's do that. Okay. So I'm gonna grab my gun metal. Guy here. Let's just use this rattle can. Good enough. For such small pieces like this, it's, it's all that you just need. You don't need anything. I don't need to fire up my air compressor for little pieces like that. So what I'll do is this and fold that over. And that. Dink and doink, just like that. And there 
there we go. A couple of gunmetal colored engines. Now, I'm going to grab my silver. Which I have to keep over here. This is the TS30 Silver Leaf. And this is the side that's exposed that you're actually going to see. to me it does this silver leaf in but it actually has a very unique smell compared to all their other TS paints I don't know what it is with this one with the silver leaf but it's, it's really unique it's got a unique smell to it it's, it's, it's all its own thing none of their other spray paints smell like TS 30 I don't know why I don't know what it is I got some gunmetal on my fingers. <laughs> that is still very, very wet, so that's it. That's all we're doing. Okay. The next step is to grab our two halves. Uh, D1, again, off the D tree. D1 off both trees. And we got to paint the inside of them cock green. That's short for cockpit green. That's these two halves here. I just realized I gotta get going. I gotta get going guys. I gotta leave, um, which means I need to end this video like pretty much right now. <laughs> so why am I continuing? Well, because <laughs> I want to. Okay, I gotta end this here, guys. Um, time got uh, time got away from me here, and so I gotta get going. So what I need to do is grab my cockpit green, which I have somewhere over here. Um, this isn't it, but it's very close. This is very close, but it's, it's got to do cockpit green on the inside here, on these two insides. I'm going to paint those before assembling these um, because it's just a pain in the neck to try and paint the inside there. So paint them first, okay? Paint them first, put those two things on there, and then they're going to go in here, okay? So what I'll do. I'll paint them up and I'll glue these together and then next time we'll put in our put these in and you'll you'll get to see that next time and also we'll continue next time on the landing gear the main gear base on the Academy kit all right so I want to thank you guys for watching I want to thank you for coming out I want to thank you for your support and the comments and all that good stuff Thank you guys very much. You're really awesome. I really appreciate it. And so, with that, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get going. So, we'll see you all in the next one.